Let's take a look at the updates I've made to the viewport touch controller add-on. First off, we need to enable it. Let's go to preferences, add-ons, and turn that on. But look here, we have a few settings. We've got the control zones and viewport options. So let's go ahead and turn this on real quick. If it doesn't show right away, you just need to touch the viewport and that'll trigger a uh, refresh. After that, you can just change the settings and it'll work fine. So we have two sliders here. We've got width and radius. The width will control the left and right dolly regions. And then our radius is going to control the middle panning region. We can toggle off and on the overlay. I will leave that on for a moment. The other set, viewport options, gizmo positions. If we hit the drop down for that, we get a list of top, right, bottom, left. We can reposition our gizmos. Cool. Um, I prefer them on the bottom, but I wanted to give you a choice of where they are for you. So set it where you want and leave it there forever. That's fine. The default settings for control zones tend to work pretty well, but it depends on your device. You may want to change them a little bit. Now that I have it turned on, oh my god, I'm going to turn up the resolution scale because I cannot use it that zoomed out with my hands. So this is how I like to have my UI when I'm using it in tablet mode. Uh, everything's pretty large, it's easy to see, and my hands have no trouble hitting these buttons without making an accidental click on something I don't want to interact with. So the main point of this was I absolutely hate using these controls when I'm sitting on the train to move things around in the UI. Uh, so this gives me the option to do it through the entire viewport screen instead of just this little section over here. Also, I am left-handed using this UI over here with my left hand blocks my view of the entire screen and uh, that makes it hard for me to see what I'm actually doing. So yeah, it's very nice to be able to use the background to move things around now. So let's take a look at these regions and what they do. Uh, again, the left and right are for zoom, so you can drag in here to zoom in and out. The middle circle area is for painting the camera around. And then outside of that, you're going to get rotation and you can click anywhere in this zone and you'll get rotation. That's pretty cool, nice. That's the basic features. Let's go down to the bottom and look at our gizmos. Now I have seven down here that I find very useful uh, and I thought it would be important to have these options in view at all times rather than having to root through menus to get to them. First off, in the viewport gizmos dropdown, we can toggle any of these off and on. So if there are some you don't want to have down here, by all means, turn them off. If you don't like voxel remesh, hide them. That's fine. All right. Uh, the first one is maximize the viewport area. Obviously, this gets rid of all of our properties menus and modifier panels and all that fun stuff. I tend not to be over in this space very often, so I like to get it out of the way whenever I'm not using it. Very handy to have that there. The next one is toggling quad view. I know a lot of people really like quad view for modeling, so hey, cool, I made it easy to get to. All these orthographic views, you'll see that they have access to panning and zooming, but I took out the ability in orthographic view to rotate because, you know, top view, front view, right view, they need to maintain that context, otherwise what's the point of having it? The next one is to recenter the object in viewport. Yeah, sometimes I've had issues where for some reason or another, Blender decides to push my camera way off to the side. And I want to make that easy to get back. So, yeah, I just have this snapping to the 3D cursor. If you get zoomed really far back, it doesn't fix that. So you're going to have to zoom in when you get back centered. And yeah, this is normal. Blender scales your zoom. So zoom in all the way and then you can just back out to a reasonable distance. It's fine. I promise. Nothing's broken, I think. The next gizmo we have is going to toggle your end panel. Ooh, look at that. There's some more buttons in here. Cool. Yeah, so with the end panel open, it's all the same features that we have elsewhere, except for two that I want to highlight here. Flip tools and lock to cursor. So flip tools is going to move our tool panel from the left to the right and vice versa. So if you like having them on the left, by all means, just leave them over there. That's the default. If you want them on the right, like I do, 
Um, just hit that button, close the menu, never have to look at it again until you start a new project. If you don't save it with the panel over there, then you're going to have to flip it every time. Not a big deal. That's fine. Uh, let's turn off the overlay. I don't need that anymore. Before we talk about lock to cursor, let's go ahead and look at the next three gizmos. The first one is lock rotation, which does what it says. When you lock rotation, what it's going to do is get rid of the rotation function. So if I turn overlays back on, you'll see we only have the sidebars now. The center circle just works everywhere inside the middle area. So anywhere you click, it's just going to pan around. Zooming still works, but rotation has been removed. If I toggle that off, I get it right back. Not a big deal. Very important to have that easy to get to. Turn the overlays back off. And let's look at the next one. Voxel remesh resolution right here. Very, very easy to get to. Uh, this is really just an issue because I like to have my UI very, very large. And so my remesh controls are way over here off the screen. Also, this slider is trash. I don't have any clue what that number actually translates to. So having the visual control for it is much, much nicer. The next one just activates it. So we can set our resolution much, much higher. And as you can see, we've got more detail to work with. So cool. All right, let's start talking about the next option here. So we talked about all the gizmos on the bottom. Uh, let's talk about lock to cursor. So I'm going to turn on real quick and just start drawing. We're going to make our box have some texture to it. Nothing too crazy though. Maybe we'll cut into it a little bit here and there. Put some ridges on there. Cool, whatever. That poor, poor default cube now looks like absolute trash. When I use lock to cursor, what I'm actually doing is setting the rotation lock to be the 3D cursor position. If you sculpt a lot, you know that the default for that is actually to base it on the last position you were sculpting. So if I sculpt right here, the rotation now is based around that point. If I start sculpting down here, well now it's based at that point. And that, I mean, that's fine if you're doing detail work. By all means, rotate around the last point that you sculpted on. But sometimes I want to focus on the whole object, and so I want to rotate centered around that block. Let's talk about a few extra features here. So. We've got my ugly box. That's fine. Let's go back to layout mode and I'm going to add another mesh here. So we've got UV sphere. Cool. I want to move that UV sphere above my box and go back into sculpt mode. Let's add some geometry to it. Bam. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. So if I want to, uh, as you can see over here on the side, the sphere is my active sculpt target, so if I go to sculpt, doo -doo 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 -doo, it's fine, I'm adding detail to that, cool, whatever. I want to sculpt on my box now, but it doesn't work. How do I solve that problem? Just double tap it. Double tap it, and now I'm sculpting on the box. Well, double tap the sphere, and now I'm sculpting back on the sphere. Back on the box again. And yeah, so double tap to change your sculpt target. Very, very, very useful. So yeah, those are all the features that I built into the tool. The whole point of the add-on was I wanted to make these features easier to get to so I can work comfortably in tablet mode. As I continue to use it, I'll probably be adding some more features. I'd also like some feedback from you guys if there are more things you think I should add to it. But yeah, cool. Thanks for checking out the video. If you'd like to try it, the link's going to be in the description. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.